Good day, people. Welcome back to this awesome channel. Today, we're going to perform some magic. Abracadabra. <laughs> nah, just kidding. Let's stick to still fun but regular 3D printing. We had some fantastic improvements in the 3D printing space in the last year. But if you didn't swap your Cartesian 3D printer for an enclosed Corex I, no worries. You'll still be able to print higher than filament with a simple improvement. So let's get right to the point. Why the hell would you even need an enclosure? I will share a bit of my story. In the early stages of my 3D printing journey, I always struggled with consistency printing the same part over and over on open style printers. Even if I dialed flow, temperature, speeds, accelerations, cooling, supports, all the goodies, I still got a failure every 20 or 30 prints. I always assumed that this was common and it is what it is. Little did I know that all my problems could be solved with one single adjustment. Fun fact, I remember at one point in time getting flashed by ads of 3D printing enclosures. Initially, I thought they were silly, but more I read and more I learned about them, the more I understood that an enclosure could solve all my consistency issues. Before going full ham, I decided to give the concept a shot. I bought a second-hand IKEA-like enclosure off Facebook Marketplace. I wanted to test how a MK3S could perform on a large part that every now and then had random curling. Surprise, surprise, if before I got a failure every 20 to 30 prints, now I could reach 70, 80 consequent prints before having a part going bad. And what does this mean in money terms? When printing hundreds of parts every month, Failed prints starts to add up to a couple of hundred dollars a month in material and many hours of wasted time. I was kind of baffled from the results a simple improvement as an enclosure could give me, especially in a print form where most of the time you aren't changing perfection, usually consistency. In a nutshell, the improvements are a blend of five key benefits. The first one is thermal stability surrounding the printed part. Air drafts and night day temperature swings are shielded and won't affect first layer or interlayer adhesion. The second one is having a smoother experience in printing ABS, ASA, nylon in a controlled environment, granting stronger parts thanks to the mentioned thermal stability. Decreasing noise is the third benefit. The enclosure dampens the steppers and the linear motor rattling. If you have many printers as I do, your time in the printing room will be more bearable. The fourth benefit is less maintenance. The enclosure acts as a shield and keeps random dust away from the printer, especially if you have other equipment that generates dust. Fifth, with addition of a filtration unit as a bento box, I did a video right here, you can scrub ultra fine particles generated by 3D printing, especially with ABS or ASA. Lastly, my print shop in the summer becomes a big, hot oven. I remember thinking one point in time, hey, I can bake a cake in here, let me turn on the AC so PLA doesn't melt on a spool. Now all my Cartesian printers are enclosed and the temperature difference is noticeable. So if you didn't upgrade your Cartesian printer to an enclosed and new printer, an enclosure will most likely improve your 3D printing experience. But which enclosure is the best? Looking at what was available on the market, I wasn't very fond of the offering. The weed tents on Amazon look somewhat flimsy. The DIY ones like the IKEA lac always seem to lack something. And the metal ones, the pro ones, always had a hefty price tag. Damn! In this plethora of choices, I studied projects from the community and found plenty of solutions, but for one reason or the other, they really didn't fit my needs. I needed something that was modular with no gaps and that I could adjust down the road. The end result after a couple of revisions are these enclosures. Shall we give them a name? What about black box? I'm open to suggestions. Just put them in the comments. The best one will be the official name. If you want to build your own, I made a list of materials. This particular 500 millimeter cube one can fit perfectly a Prusa Mini or a MK3S. I'll put the plans on my website for free, link below. If you have another Cartesian printer you want to enclose, check the overall bed travel and Z travel. Speaking of cost, the bill material is pretty short. You will need 12 500mm 
aluminum extrusion that will cost you around 40 to 50 bucks depending where you shop. I got these from Ziltech because I need to do a lot of enclosures and a couple extra projects. If you don't have the tools to cut the extrusions, you can get a pre-cut set on Amazon if you're in a hurry or Aliexpress if you can wait. For joining the extrusions, I used eight three-way end corners that cost less than one buck each. Once the frame is ready, I placed adhesive tape to seal the enclosure to keep the panels in place. And if you want to cheap out and save probably 10 bucks, you can use boron clips. After, you will need the enclosure panels. For top, bottom, and sides, I opted for 24 by 36 inches corrugated plastic panels. Usually local hardware stores have them and range between five to eight dollars a piece. On Amazon, I found a deal for less than 50 bucks and I can make two and a half enclosures with one pack. For minimizing waste, I wrapped the same panel around the corners. Finally, for the front doors, I used polycarbonate panels. If you want to save a little, look at local marketplaces. I found a local guy selling four by eight feet panels for 50 bucks each. Quite a steal. The front panels will need hinges. I like Simon's VZ bolt ones that I use on Legacies and their fives. Thank you, Simon. You will need to print four of them, two for panel, and some hardware to secure them to the aluminum frame. If you're like me and like to see what's happening inside the enclosure, you can add a 5 volt USB LED light. This one can be found on Amazon for like $5 a pop. Lastly, if you print technical materials as I do, a recirculating filter as the bento box will be perfect. And that's it. Couple words of advice. If you have a junction between two corrugated panels, don't place a junction on the top. If you plan to place a filament spool on the top, the heat will soften the glue and bow the panel. You can put a 2020 in the middle. I just use an internal spool like on these proceedings. In this enclosure, usually I print PETG, ESA, not much else. If you're worried that 45 or 50C will fry your electronics, over, I think, more than a year, the Prus Electronics did an awesome job. I didn't ruin any of them. If you plan to go above that temperature, I recommend to route the electronics outside the enclosure, just in case. If you still want a real deal, you'll have to fork about three times the amount for a Prusa box. Choice is up to you. I will spare you the math, but it really adds up if you have dozens of printers. Will this setup outperform new correct size? No, but it will grant you access to printing technical materials without needing to change all your printers, with all the benefits of isolating the printers from the surroundings. If you're thinking of opening a 3D printing shop and want to know the fastest way to make it happen, you can grab my book where I explain in detail how to maximize from the start your 3D printing business. And the investment is less than a spool of PLA. Thank you for watching. I will see you in the next one.